Okay, so up to this point, we've talked about pulleys, and we've talked about frictionless pulleys. Uh, the next topic I want to kind of throw in on us, of course, now that we know friction, is what if we have friction in our pulley system, right? So we've taken this pulley and actually um, put it right down on a surface, so now it actually can't move. So what are the factors that uh, cause friction uh, um, in, in these types of pulleys? The two main uh, factors in determining what this T2 and T1 are, uh, one is, of course, obviously the coefficient of uh, static friction um, along that surface. The other part that's very critical is the amount of surface contact. Those are the two big things that we need to look at. Uh, if we look at this, this uh, goes through some specific derivations I'm not going to spend a lot of time on. But it says let T2 and T1 be the values of force uh, in the high tension and low tension side of the belt respectively. High tension meaning that T2 is a greater uh, force than T1 and this is the direction of slip. So it's on the slip side, the, the direction that it's going to slip uh, that is has that um, high force. That means our frictional force will be in this opposite direction along that. So even though it is continuous, uh, T2 does not equal T1 unless, of course, that surface is frictionless. And we are kind of looking in this chapter on friction. So what does that mean, and how do we kind of develop an equation for a relationship between T1 and T2? Like I said, I'm not going to spend a lot of time in the derivation of this. The book does a great job of it. But it's saying, let's suppose that uh, there is impending slip when T2 and T1 are related. Uh, how are they related? And we take a small slice out of here, some small delta theta. Uh, we're going to look at this free body diagram of this small section. Here's our uh, delta of our uh, normal force and uh, the delta of our frictional force. And of course, there is this change in tension between the two sides uh, because of this frictional force. Um, and then we have this small angle. Um, due to the arc that we are seeing, right? And it goes through this whole derivation on the bottom of summing forces in the xy direction. And we can say that as this gets small, for sines, delta theta equals, uh, sine of delta theta equals delta theta. And as this gets small, delta theta gets small for the cosine, it is approximately one. Uh, for small delta thetas and radians, we can get to this point here. Bottom line, where we get to is uh, this equation on the bottom that is important for us right here, okay? And this equation tells us that um, T2, which is our high side, high tension side, is equal to T1e uh, to the mu beta, and beta is these, this wrap angle in radians. And mu, of course, again, is our um, friction, our coefficient of static friction. So just a few comments on this before we do an example is that T2 equals uh, T1 e to the mu beta is only used and is only uh, can be applied if we're at slip or impending slip. Prior to that, of course, T2 is less than that. Uh, the angle of wrap beta must be measured in radians, and that's a huge problem that students typically get. And then again, in some cases or some problems, the main challenge of applying this is really identifying which is the high side of the tension, right? Uh, if we, especially with multiple pulleys going through a system, which side is the high side? Uh, for problems involving multiple belt cylinder contact surface, it is uh, possible that all the surfaces or some surfaces may slip. Okay, so with this uh, knowledge and this equation here, uh, let's take a look at an example.